we now have a member of Congress who is urging the federal government and the Department of Defense to screen the social media accounts of U.S. service members. What on earth? This story comes from The Hill. Spire, I think is her name, calls for screening of service member social media accounts. She wants individuals with sensitive roles for ties, uh, to, individuals with sensitive roles to be screened for ties to white supremacists and far right groups. Representative Jackie Spear, Democrat from California, member of the House Armed Services Committee, wrote a letter to President Biden, and this was obtained by Politico. They said the federal government must do more to weed out far right views. Okay. We'll see if we can define what those are. And also white supremacist sympathizers in the armed forces and other areas of the government. Uh, perhaps most importantly, the DOD and U.S. US government at large are not effectively screening service members and other individuals with sensitive roles for white supremacist and violent extremist ties, she wrote. Comments came as a response last week to CNN analysis that said that there was a disproportionate amount of act active duty retired members in the U.S. Armed Forces, US armed forces that were there at the Capitol Hill riot. All right, so here's the letter over from Ms. Spears. Sent on January 29th, Congress of the United States House of Representatives. Send this over to Avril Haines, we know is the Director of National Intelligence. We talked about her. Also, Lloyd Austin, the Secretary of Defense. We also talked about him. So she's addressing them. She says, listen, in recent years, I become increasingly alarmed about the connections between the military and the service members and violent extremist groups. I believe the current approach is insufficient to deal with the threat from these extremist movements. So let's see if she defines this. On February 11th, the Military Personnel Subcommittee convened a hearing on the risk posed by white supremacists and violent extremists in the military. Witnesses testified that for decades, violent white supremacist groups have targeted military service members for recruitment, especially because of their training, which makes terrorist attacks more achievable and lethal. Witnesses said dozens of white supremacists who were active duty service members and veterans have been arrested in recent years for planning and engaging in terrorist attacks and murders. Last year, we saw horrific illustrations of why the stakes are so high. There was an army soldier accused of plotting with a neo-Nazi group to ambush his own unit in June 2020. Fiscal year 2021, National Defense Authorization Act includes provisions to improve the tracking and reporting of white supremacist and violent extremist activities by service members and to establish a deputy inspector general responsible in part for monitoring and evaluating the DOD's response to these threats. But these actions are not nearly enough. At the insistence of President Trump, the conferees dropped my provision to create a standalone violent extremism offense under the Uniform Military Code, despite the DOD's support for this policy change. So they are, they are doing something about it, right? So there is something that's taking place there. They have a violent extremism uh, offense under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Most importantly, the DOD and U.S. government at large are not effectively screening service members and other individuals with sensitive roles for white supremacists and violent extremist ties. Social media platforms like Facebook, Gab, Parler, 4chan, they're frequently used by domestic terrorist groups to recruit members and plan violent attacks, including some of the above cases involving military service members. Platforms were crucial for planning the January 6th domestic terrorist attack on the U.S. Capitol. Yet social media is not reviewed during the military's accessions process and even as part of the background investigation. This gap is inexcusable. The director of defense and counterintelligence agency should do more. The situation clearly needs presidential leadership. President Biden, I call on you to issue an executive order identifying white supremacy and violent extremism as a critical threat that must be considered as part of the security clearance. This would involve at minimum updating the Office of Personnel Management standard form to ask applicants for national security positions to disclose all social media platforms on which they participate and all social media handles used and grant permission to share non-public social media information with investigators. So all of the it basically, I think anybody, right, anybody who's in a national security position, which is arguably the entire National Guard when they were there outside of the Capitol for two weeks. Further, DSA should be directed to develop practical means to review social media information, identify white supremacist and violent extremist activities among the applicants for security clearances. Phased approach she wants. I recommend that a review of social media information begin first with military service members who are considered for security clearance at the top secret level, followed by the secret level, and then followed by other cleared civilian and contractor employees. So basically everybody. Start at the top and just work your way down. Start with top secret, then secret, then uh, you know other cleared civilians and contractors. Everybody. Secretary Austin, in, in addition to offering full cooperation with the above request, I ask you to direct the military services to establish 
procedures to review the social media activity of the recruits as part of their accessions process, including development of guidance to assist recruiters in identifying extremist groups and activities. I don't know what this means. What are extremist groups? I strongly believe the actions recommended in this letter have been justified, new sense of urgency, uh, the central role of social media and their planning and organization. Everything has been outdated. We got to have to modernize this stuff. Wild. We don't know what they're talking about. We don't know what an extremist group is, identifying extremist groups. But apparently, uh, if you listen to John Brennan, who used to work for the CIA, somebody in a very high level of national security, he is indicated, we covered it, we played it on this show, that even libertarians should be sort of lumped into this group. Anybody who questions the government is now... Uh, an extremist, I guess, according to their their standards. So if you are in the military and you have ever posted on social media, there may come a time here very sh soon where got to give that up. Right. And I don't know what the what the protocols are in the military. I don't know if you have to do that anyways. I never served in the military. But in my, in my mind, the, the idea is that uh, there are some things that you can express an opinion on regardless of whether you're in the military or not. Right? Don't the politicians always fight for the military vote? The military likes me. No, the military likes me. No, I get the, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And so you, you would want, I would imagine, a military that is representative of the American population to, to, to some degree. Or do you want just a bunch of people who have the exact same political ideology as the administration that's in charge? So now the next time there's a Republican president, are they going to go and scrub every single service member's background in social media to determine whether or not they are in a new definition of an extremist group? If they're all Joe Biden lovers, which after the after this four years, they very well may be because everybody else is going to be identified as an extremist and thrown out or demoted. Right. They may not have the ability and the wherewithal to, you know, uh, uh, discharge people out of the military. But if they've identified you as an extremist because you got on there and you said, I disagree with this war, I disagree with bombing the hell out of whoever we bomb next or whatever that looks like, then. Are you now an extremist? Are you now at jeopardy? Are you now somebody who is not qualified to get top secret level clearance, even secret level clearance? Can you not even be a contractor for the federal government anymore because you have an opinion? Or do we want people here in this country, whether you're in the military or not, to be free thinking, free expression people? Why wouldn't the military get a say or, ha or be able to express an opinion on what's happening in the political world? Are they the only group of people in this country that cannot express a political opinion anymore? And how do we define what an extremist is? Was not defined in this letter. I don't know what that means. I have no idea what it means. And what are they looking for? You got to open up everything if you want to go serve the country because you might have a political disagreement with somebody. I get along with a lot of people I disagree with. I have a lot of opinions that are contra contrary to a lot of other people that I have to work with. It's troubling stuff, in, in, in my opinion. And this is being carried through on the back of the Capitol Hill stuff. And it will continue to do so. So, all right, my friends, that's it for this part of the presentation. I am going to go through any of the questions that came up over on locals.com in our live show thread. I'm going to end the live show here and then do the Q&A before we sign off. A couple quick things. I want to thank our supporters over on Locals. Uh, we have some awesome people who signed up very recently. We have uh, Macabre. 8519 signed up. We have Saline Sal who joined up. We also have SNT Careers. We have Jen underscore McClellan in the house. And then we have The Messenger who just joined up over on Locals. I want to thank, as always, Miss Faith and Ma Fox, the moderator, as well as a couple other people who've been around for a long time. I'm talking about Ronnie D. We got Ditka's Bears. We have Chairman of the Board. We got Jason Seagal. We got Scuba Babe. We have Sach. We got Cody Bear. We got Cat Crap Fever. Of course, always Sharon Quidney. And I know Beth Coddington's in here somewhere. Nano Bingo, all of you, thank you all so much for the support. And for those of you who are not over on Locals, uh, there's a lot of 
Great stuff there. Let me show you around. We got my book is over there, a free copy of Beginning to Winning. It's available in PDF. You can also buy it on Amazon. There's a link in the description if you want that. All of the slides are, are over there. You can download the slides, get a copy of your impeachment documents because we got a, a, an impeachment trial happening next week. We also have the existing system templates over there, a little personal productivity system that I developed that I use the heck out of. It's been a game changer for me in my life. You can download that for free, no charge at all. Uh, links and conversation, those are also available, but the real reason to be over on Locals is the great people. It is, uh, most of this stuff, uh, everything is free right now currently, uh, but the Q&A stuff is gonna be behind a paywall. So if you wanna see that, if you want to uh, comment on anything over there, it's five bucks a month, that's it. Super inexpensive. We're trying to deliver as much value as we can. Uh, since we got demonetized here, I may be posting more stuff over there. We'll we'll see. We're trying to figure all of this out. We uh, uh, we were in the middle of a restructuring, and we were going to use a lot of the the you know your generous contributions to the show to grow the the show, and we're still going to do some of that. But uh, now that a big revenue stream has been uh, gone then uh, you know we got we got to change course a little bit so thanks for understanding uh, i'm going to end this now and then we're going to head on over i'm going to i'm going to record a q and a session and then i'm going to post that over on locals so thanks for bearing with me as we figure out how to uh, pivot here a little bit pivot was a big word last year in 2020 and it might just be uh, the, the word of the year again because we're going to have to do that but i want to thank you for being here and being part of the show we're going to be back here same time same place tomorrow it's going to be at 5 p.m arizona time which is mountain time 4 p.m on the west coast in california we have 6 p.m central time over in texas 7 p.m on the east coast Everybody, thank you so much for being with us here today. I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful night. Sleep well. Bye-bye.